How's it going today guys? This is Dan with uh, the Rapways and Rapway Marine. Um, today we are going to be working on a, a small Chinese four-wheeler, a little kid's four-wheeler. Um, we're going to be going through and cleaning the carburetor on it. Uh, it also needs a new starter solenoid. Um, and we're also going to be putting some new plastics on it as well as an oil change and some other maintenance items to get it ready to go. So take a quick look around it and then we'll get to work. So as you can see, the, the wiring is a little bit of a mess. We're gonna be re replacing this guy here, that's bad. Um, I did already do the diagnose on this thing and everything. Unfortunately, I did not get that on camera. But we'll just kind of give you a little walk around here. Um, yes, yeah, so these are a pretty common little, little Chinese four-wheeler. Uh, the customer just purchased it for his son. He's gonna be giving it to him for, for Christmas, so. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll be getting in there, be uh, cleaning that carburetor, changing oil, um, and then yeah, all these camel plastics are going to get replaced with new, new kind of Spider-Man black ones. So, be a good little project, and should it should turn into being a pretty cool little little four wheeler. So, yeah, without further ado. Let's get to work. So the first thing that we're gonna do with this project is we're gonna go ahead and remove the plastics off of it, and the, or I should say the fenders and the tank cover. Um, the reason we're gonna do that is it'll just make it a little bit easier to get to the carburetor um, and the electrical. Now you certainly do not have to do this step first. Uh, if you're just cleaning the carburetor, you do not have to remove the plastics, but on this machine, being that we're doing that anyway, it'll just make life a little bit easier. So. Set you guys down and we'll just go ahead and start removing all that. All right guys, so we got the, the plastics removed. Um, the key switch and that tail light are still on them, but we'll, we'll pull them up before we install them into the new machine, or this machine I should say. So what was involved is these footboards first off. Um, there was four screws in them, went and pulled them, or four bolts rather in them, we went and pulled them out. Um, this machine is missing a lot of hardware is to hold them plastics on as well as a lot of stuff is real loose. So. There's supposed to be um, hardware up in the front here and on the other side that bolts that in. Um, and then there is also supposed to be um, bolts that go through right by the battery and bolt into here. And those were missing as well. Um, as you can see in, in the, the previous clip, um, I did remove the, the steering stem bolts. Uh, I did not need to. Uh, Learn from my my mistakes. I guess you didn't need to I was hoping to be able to pull the steering stem forward in order to get it out uh, That didn't quite work out So I just ended up loosening the fuel tank and sliding it back to give the plastics room to get out from behind the steering stem And then I did have to remove the handlebars in order to feed them through That hole right there. So so the next thing we're gonna do with this project now that We got the plastics removed is we we're gonna go ahead and uh remove and clean this carburetor. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is it looks like there's two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in. Um, looks like we're missing the nut on this side, but uh, yeah, we'll take that 10 millimeter bolt out right there, 
Remove the fuel inlet from there. Remove our 10 millimeter bolt from here. And uh, this is our throttle cable linkage uh, where it goes into the slide and that'll just unscrew from there. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's get these bolts removed. So we got our two bolts removed from the carburetor. As you can see, the carburetor is loose in here. So next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is remove that fuel line clamp and the fuel line, and that'll allow us to actually remove this whole fuel tank off of here so we can empty it and clean it out really well. Um, over on this side, take a look at here, see if I can do it with camera in hand, but we wanna, this just loosens, so this is your throttle cable, comes down and it runs your, uh, well that's the choke plate, but it runs your slide. I'll kinda show you once we get it out here. Just unscrews, so. Okay guys, so we got our fuel line removed. Go ahead and remove our, our throttle cable. So and that should just slide out of here. Nice. Okay, so now that we've got our carburetor removed, you wanna be very careful with this needle. Um, this actually does regulate the amount of fuel that the engine gets as you pull the throttle and the slide goes up. Not only does it allow more fuel flow to go into the engine, but this actually rides in the main jet or in the emulsion tube, I should say, and it uh, controls the amount of fuel. So as you can see already, so focus, that needle is very, very green. So there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of varnish and, and bad fuel junk in there. So let's go ahead and get this carburetor on the bench and we'll, we'll tear into it. Okay guys, so let's get to taking this carburetor apart. So the first thing, is I always like to work on a paper towel. Uh, small parts don't roll away quite as easily and uh, it kind of absorbs any fuel that is leaking out of this carburetor. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the two screws. There's one on this side and one on this side here. You want to be careful not to strip them out. These screws strip out very easily. Especially if they've been in there for a little while. So Now cleaning a carburetor is something that a lot of people do at home, which is great. Um, and it's also something that I see a lot of issues with when people do on their own. Um, I get it a lot of times where customer brings a unit in, says he just cleaned the carburetor, that's not what's wrong with it. I go in it and see what uh, that the carburetor is indeed the issue. Um, so as you can see, it's real gummed up. So all in there is all um, varnish and it's very, very green. So this should look perfectly clean when we are done with it. So the first thing I do is I just disassemble the carburetor now it's very important to lay everything out really nice. Now normally I would work in a little bit bigger area, but obviously I'm trying to get everything on camera. So we're gonna try and not put a carburetor kit in it. Reason is, is because carburetors for these, um, these machines are kind of hard to find. They just wanna sell you a whole new carburetor. And obviously that's rather expensive. So that's, that's not the route we wanna go. So this is the float. This is what controls the height of the fuel in the carburetor. So this one comes out with a simple pin you can pull. Set that off to the side. And we'll set this float off to the side as well. Now something on the float to make sure you do not lose and to inspect is the needle. So this is the needle valve that rides inside of this seat right here. And what that does is shuts, on, shuts off the fuel and lets the fuel flow into the carburetor as your float floats up and down and allows it to. So again, what I do is I take small parts like this and I put it into the, the carburetor bowl to so when we put our chemical in there, it'll also remove the junk off that. So I put all the small parts in there. Now, two separate jets here. So this, this jet here, this is your uh, pilot jet, it's called, otherwise known as your idle jet. And this one here, right here, 
is your main jet and that feeds into your emulsion tube. So this jet here runs when the machine is at idle to, you know, maybe up to even a quarter throttle and then this jet takes over. Now it's important to remember that these jets don't shut off. So even at wide open, it is pulling out of your pilot jet yet. Um, so that, that is something just to keep in mind. Now these jets are we're gonna have very small orifices, so we'll go ahead and remove them with just a flathead screwdriver. Now again, these jets are um, brass, so they will strip out very easy. So it's important to just take your time, go nice and slow. Make sure you don't wreck anything. So there's your, your pilot jet for your idle circuit. And we'll go ahead and remove our main jet. Here's our main jet. So the hole in the main jet is gonna be significantly larger than the one in the pilot jet. Now something you can do is hold it up to the light and you should easily be able to see light going through that jet. Which our main jet is completely plugged. Take a look at our idle jet. And of course our idle jet is completely plugged as well. So we'll go through on how to clean those out, but for now we're gonna put them in there and let them soak in, in a chemical I'll show you here in a second. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is remove our emulsion tube. So for that, we'll grab our wrench. And that just unthreads right out of there. And there's our emulsion tube. Now you can see that has small holes in the side as well. Those all have to be perfectly clean and down the main throat. And you can even see in the video here in the camera, the junk in that hole. So your needle valve comes down from the top and rides in here and meters the amount of fuel that's allowed to come up into the main throat of the carburetor, which is right here. So. Yeah, that's as far as you need to disassemble this carburetor. The only other thing that should be done, and I'm not sure if this carburetor has it. Yes, it does. So this is going to be your idle mixture screw. Now, it's important to remove that to get the idle passage clear because, again, that is the smallest passage in the carburetor. So to start, so this has to be a certain amount of turns out. It's counted by the turns out. So in order to get a starting point, when you start the uh, engine up for the first time, you wanna turn it in and count the turns. So here we'll have half, one, and a quarter. So our one and a quarter turns out is what we're gonna to wanna to be. You can go ahead and remove that. And you wanna obviously remember that one and a quarter turns out because that'll help you in the future to get a good starting point when you go to adjust this engine, a lot of times you don't even have to mess with it. If you set it back at that one and a quarter, it'll run great. Um, other times you gotta adjust it a little bit. So, so there's that. Now what I like to use is a, um, a chemical to clean it, is I like to use this engine tuner, it's called. It's, a, it's actually a BRP Johnson Evinrude product. Um, and what it is, is it actually is designed to run through the engine to remove carbon, but it works great to remove um, the green um, gunk that is formed by bad fuel. So I'll give that can a couple shakes. I'll go ahead and we'll spray that down real well. You can even almost see the green bubbling out of it already. And we'll fill all our passages in this portion of the carburetor as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll repeat this several times. This carburetor is bad enough, I will let it sit with this solution in it for probably somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour. And then uh, we'll get back with you guys. Okay guys, so it's been about an hour. It's been sitting, you can see how green that solution is. Um, so this stuff here can be really bad for your hands, for your skin, um, as any chemical can be, but I've actually gotten sick from this stuff before. So uh, what I like to do is I always just put a a rubber glove on. Now you want to make sure it's a nitrile glove. Um, I love these Raven, these Raven gloves. 
right here. Um, they hold up really well to chemical. So what you're gonna wanna do is uh, carefully dump the solution out. I have a, a chemical safe container over here. So go ahead and dump the majority of that out. I'll put the rest on the paper towel there. So as you can see, it's pretty clean in there already. Now, what I like to use is, um, I prefer to use brake cleaner versus carbon choke cleaner. Carbon choke cleaner does not seem to remove uh, the green varnish as well as brake cleaner. It also helps to neutralize this chemical. So what you wanna do is just go ahead and rinse Rinse everything out here. Kind of hard to do on camera and not get my camera sprayed with solvent, but um, as you can see, there's still a little bit of junk down in that bottom corner right there, um, as well as on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and um, dry this out with the blow gun. And then sometimes when it's real bad like this, you can actually take a flat blade screwdriver and kind of scratch at some of the junk to remove, to remove the majority of it. There's also a little bit down there. You can see that removed most of it, but we'll go ahead while we clean up these other parts and uh, just put another round of, of the engine tuner in that. And we'll go through and we'll go and do all of our small parts. So here's our, our float assembly. Now something you want to do is look um, is look really close in there to make sure there's no fuel within this float. Um, if the float fills with fuel, it's obviously not going to float in the fuel, and it's not going to shut your fuel level off. So um, this is obviously nice and clean. We'll set that aside. Now here's our jet. So here is our pilot jet. As you can see, the outside is looking looking nice and clean, pretty darn clean but the inside is still plugged. So what you wanna do is um, first try to blow brake cleaner through it, which it will, which no brake cleaner will go through. And then I use compressed air. Take a look here. So for jets like this that are, are that bad, um, what you're going to want to do is I like to use a bread tie. Um, actually works really well. The wire inside is the right diameter. Now what you'd never want to do is never run any anything that's abrasive through here. So um, you never want to run a um, like a drill bit, a real small drill bit is a common mistake people make. Um, you also never want to run... Um, like a like a torch tip cleaner is another thing that a lot of people will run through uh, their jets and what that actually does is that'll oversize that orifice hole so um, there's a number on all jets that say what size it is and if you um, oversize that it obviously is going to flow more fuel causing your engine to run rich and um, just create all kinds of other other headaches for you. So um, this one is real plugged up. I'm struggling to get the wire even through it. Um, the wire keeps coming out. I don't know if you guys can, can see that on camera or not, but it's full of, full of green junk. So we're just gonna keep trying to work at it. And um, yeah. There we're getting a little bit of flow, of flow through it. We'll go ahead and blow air back through it again. See if we're getting anywhere. Nope, so it's still plugged up tight. So I'm gonna keep working on this one here and then I'll get back with you guys once I get it cleaned out. I'm just gonna continue to do a series of working at it with our with our bread tie with the brake cleaner and I'll probably use a little bit of engine tuner again once we get it cleared um, just to make sure it eats any other junk away. So, okay, so I've got our pilot jet soaking back in our carburetor bowl again, trying to loosen some of that junk up. Um, here's our main jet. See if we can get that one cleaned out. The main jet's a lot easier because of the fact that it's a lot bigger orifice. So 
So we'll blow through it again with a little bit of um, brake cleaner. A little compressed air. As you can see, if it'll focus, you can see through it, but there's a little bit of green gunk right there yet. You can kind of see it. So the hole is open, but there's some green junk there. So we want to go ahead and make sure that that is clean. Again, this is one of those things where that'll get left. The, the machine may run well for a little bit. It'll suck in that, that little piece of junk there and all of a sudden it'll, it'll not run well again and you'll wonder what happened. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop that back in there. Here's our emulsion tube. Once again, we'll do the same thing. Blow it out with a little bit of brake cleaner. What I like to do is I plug the end and that forces the brake cleaner out through those very small holes. And you can actually watch the brake cleaner shoot out of each hole when you do that to ensure that it's they're all clear and open. So a little bit of compressed air, plug the hole again. Be careful when you do this that you don't get any solvent in your eye, but as you can see, that's nice and clean and open now. So this piece here is good. We'll set it aside. Uh, here's our needle valve assembly. So these you want to be careful with. Now, again, in a perfect world, you would replace this and it would be new. Um, but this customer, you know, these machines unfortunately aren't really something that worth sticking a lot of money into because they are so cheap to begin with. So what we're going to go ahead, or which is a lot a reason a lot of people clean these carburetors. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do for this needle, so that is actually what's called a Viton tip is what that um, the tip of this needle is made out of. As you can see, it's it's um, black in color, and you can see a little bit of a ring around it. That's not really what you want to see, but again, we're gonna we're gonna give it a try. So what I like to do is spray a paper towel with a little bit of uh, carbon choke cleaner. Now it's important to use carbon choke cleaner on these needles, or it can distort the shape of that needle and it will not seal. So I'll just put a little bit on a paper towel, and then just wipe that. That Viton tip on there and you can see the, the junk coming off. So kind of scrub that up just a little bit. Try to get the camera to focus and as you can see, it's pretty clean, there's no more ring. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what you wanna do right there. Kind of keep wiping on that until no more, no more black junk. Now, if you are to buy a carb kit and you are to install a new needle, what you're gonna wanna do is do the same thing because this needle, new, will actually be gray. And that gray is a coating that that Viton tip comes with to protect it. You're gonna wanna do the same thing and remove that gray coating on the tip. If you don't, it's unlikely it's gonna seal or create a proper seal. So um, yeah, that's definitely something you're gonna wanna go ahead and do uh, regardless if it's a, a brand new needle or a used needle like we're gonna try and reuse here. So the carb body is the same thing. You wanna make sure you blow uh, brake cleaner and compressed air through this passage where your pilot jet went for your idle circuit, your emulsion tube, your main jet, your needle and seat assemblies. This is the seat that that needle rides down in and seals. Very important not to ever use anything abrasive in here. If you mar that seating surface for that needle, it will not seal anymore, and then in this case, this seat is non-replaceable. So this carburetor body is junk, and they are not cheap. Um, yeah, so and we'll also want to um, push compressed air through through here. This is where your idle speed, or not your idle speed, I'm sorry, but your idle mixture screw goes is in there. So we want to make sure all these are good and cleaned out. So um, unfortunately, I kind of have to do this off camera so I don't get... Um, solvent all over my camera, but we'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you guys when it's all done. Okay guys, so then once you run your brake cleaner through everything, um, something I forgot to mention is these two holes right here. So these are um, your bowl vents and one also con helps to control your idle circuit. So you wanna make sure those get cleaned out really well as well. So blow air through here and you'll feel it come out. 
where your idle mixture screw goes. So you want to allow it to come out there and then plug that hole and that'll actually force it to come out the idle circuit jets within there. So you want to go ahead and do that. Pull that seat out. You can see that that seat is nice and shiny in there, so that's good and clean. We should have a good sealing surface. Um, yeah, so this carb body is ready to rock and roll. As you can see, it's all nice and shiny and clean. So there we go there. Um, this is just the spring for your, um, your idle mixture screw. So set that aside. Same thing here, we'll take some brake cleaner on our paper towel. Wipe this needle off really well. Now guys, you can do this without this engine tuner um, in the aerosol can if you don't wanna invest in that. Um, it's just a one-time thing, you know, I think this can runs, yeah, just shy of $15. So um, it's not cheap. Um, you can just use brake cleaner. It just takes a little while longer. Um, so there's that assembly. So we can actually go ahead and put that back into our carb body. So again, that goes right into here. We'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll screw that all the way in and then we'll back it out our one and a quarter turns. Okay, so that's snug. You don't wanna go tight, guys. So we'll back this out, our half, one and a quarter turns, and that'll give us a very good starting point um, when we go to run this machine. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and continue cleaning out these jets and I'll get back with you when they're clean. Okay guys, so as you can see, our carburetor bowl is nice and clean now. I went ahead and got another um, paper towel. I like to use a second paper towel for the, the reassembly process. Um, here's our main jet once again, all cleared and open. And I was now able to get our pilot jet nice and open. I don't know if I'll be able to get that on camera. No. But again, guys, if you hold it up to a, a light, like up at your ceiling, you should be able to see um, light shining through and it should not look obstructed at all. Um, if it looks to be obstructed at all, it is not all the way clean. And even the smallest, smallest bit of debris in there will not allow this, this jet to flow. So let's see again here. There, you can kind of see light through it now. Let the camera kind of focus and then go away. You can see. So we'll go ahead and reinstall everything into this carburetor. It's all, all clean and good to go. So your pilot jet goes in here. Um, but before I do that, we'll go ahead and install our emulsion tube. It just allows for a little bit more room. We'll go ahead and we'll snug that down here. Again, you don't wanna get real tight. This is a brass fitting or brass jet going into an aluminum carb body. So things will strip out very easily. Now we'll go ahead and install our pilot jet into there. Go ahead and thread that down. Again, lightly snug it up. Don't have to get crazy with it, just, just snug is good. See how far it threads down there. Then we'll go ahead and put our main jet, and again, our main jet sits right in the top of our um, emulsion tube. So we'll go ahead and we'll thread that guy back down. Snug him up. Now the next step is to go ahead and reinstall our, our needle and our float assembly. So our needle just goes on, on here like that. And then it sets right down into the seat. So it goes down in the seat like that. And then our pin just runs through right through here. You kind of want to just center up that pin like that. Now, what's going to be kind of hard to, to show you here, I'll grab the camera and do my best. Now the float height, so in other words, I'm trying to film this by myself, but this height right here that the float sits 
when the carburetor is upside down, it's resting position, you want to be about flat or level flat, you know, it's on the same plane as the um, edge of your carburetor body. Or what you wanna look at is, is that um, the, the float bracket, so the, the piece that goes right, that holds that needle up, makes a 90 degree angle with the carb body tower, they call that, that holds that on. So you can see that makes about a 90 degree angle, but we are sitting a little bit low. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that float height up just a little okay, bit. Okay guys, so as you can see there, we went ahead and adjusted that float height up a little bit. Now, if your float height is too low, upside down like this, so in other words, if this is sitting down too far like that, what that's gonna end up doing is that's going to allow uh, more fuel into that bowl, and in extreme cases, it can't even allow fuel to overflow out of that carburetor and come out the, um, the overflow line. So you wanna make sure you don't do that. Um, opposite ways, if you have this set, so the float height, again, speaking with the carburetor upside down, is too high, so if it were up like that, um, obviously that's, that's extreme, but if it were up like that, what that's gonna end up doing is shutting your fuel off uh, really early. And what that can do is on at wide open for an extended period of time, it can actually run the carburetor out of fuel and cause the engine to, to bog down or even completely die. So that float height is a, a very, very critical piece. Okay, so now that we've got our float height set appropriately, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our our carburetor bowl here, put our O-ring back into place. Like that, making sure it's properly seated. You don't wanna put it together and have that get crushed. Um, and then what I find works best is to just kinda of set it back down on top so you can watch how it lines up. So there we go, we've got that flip back around. We'll go ahead and put our, our screws back in here. What you wanna do is as you're doing this, don't tighten one side all the way. Um, that O-ring kinda of has to seat evenly. So you wanna do one side and then alternate back to the other, snug that side down a little bit, come back, snug this down. Um, again, you don't have to get crazy with tightening these. Um, it's just an O-ring sealing surface. And if you get too crazy, again, this is just aluminum. You will strip the threads out. Of course, at that point it's junk. So. Um, so one other component we have to clean yet that you do not want to forget about. And so that, comp that component that you don't want to forget about is this needle here. As you can see, that is very full of green, green varnish. Again, this is the needle that's on our throttle linkage and our throttle slide here. Um, so you want to clean that up. So what I like to do is I just spray a, a small amount of that, of whatever solvent you're using. Again, I'm using the engine tuner on a rag and then just kind of wipe that needle and to get all the green the green residue off of there so this can take a little bit this one's pretty 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 green here but as you can see all that green coming off we're even gonna go ahead and we'll just spray a little bit of this solvent right on to there Let it soak and then we'll go ahead and just keep wiping that off until you get it until you get it all nice and clean but that's that's a very important important step guys if you forget to do that the first time you drop that needle down into that main jet into that emulsion tube i should say um it can gum that up and it, it's not going to meter the proper amount of fuel if that needle is all full of junk so um, you can kind of rot or spin that needle around Make sure it's all good and clean, like so. As you can see, it's all nice and clean and good to go there. So yeah, it's all ready to be reinstalled. Now before you reinstall the carburetor, so this is the side that gets bolted to the, the engine itself for the intake. Um, you wanna make sure that this O-ring here is in good shape. If this O-ring is tore or cracked, it, 
it'll allow air to slip in through the side and not pull uh, through the carburetor. And that can obviously cause some issues. So one thing that I was incorrect on, and again, these are all a little bit different, but this one, uh, the carburetor itself is actually threaded. So I said earlier that it was missing a nut. A lot of times you'll see um, this channel here will hold the nut for that bolt to go through into that nut. Um, this one, the carburetor itself is actually threaded, so kind of nice there. But uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and we'll get this reinstalled and we'll get back with you. Okay guys, so one thing that comes up quite a bit with fuel lines is, is it okay to use a zip tie to hold on a fuel line like what's going on to this, the carburetor on this ATV that we're working on right here? So here's the answer to your question. Yes, it is appropriate to use that, but it has to be a fuel line zip tie. So this zip tie, as you can see, has a arc in it right here, or a bend to the end. Um, the reason it has that is because when it goes around uh, the fuel line or around object, like my finger, it'll actually create a full circle, not a squared off end versus a traditional zip tie with just a, a square end. So if you compare the two side by side, this is the traditional and this is the fuel line zip tie. Um, so that is, that is the answer to that question. It is appropriate to use a zip tie, but it has to be the fuel line zip tie that is designed to be used in this application. And again, this is not designed for high pressure. This is designed for um, just a, a fuel flow. So in other words, a uh, gravity fed system, like on this ATV, from the fuel tank gravity feeding down to the carburetor. So we'll go ahead and uh, put the zip tie on and get back with you. Okay, so now that our carburetor is reinstalled, um, I've got our fuel tank on, but it's just sitting on here because we have to have that loose in order to get our plastics put back on, which is gonna end up being the last thing that we do. The next step is to tackle this wire harness so as you can see somebody has been in here and cut wires and put um, splices in why that wire was cut is beyond me um, there's also a gray wire here connected to nothing um, just cut so this customer just uh, wants this machine to run basically so there at one point was a headlight on here He's not concerned with that. He's also not concerned with the tail light working. Um, there's a safety lanyard here. He's not concerned with that. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna install a new starter solenoid right here and uh, hook all that back up. This is the component that actually failed. My assumption is these wires are cut because of a past um, person trying to diagnose why this machine would not crank over anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. Um, there's two, two nuts that hold the, the leads in and then a, a plug that runs back to right here. So I've got the new one in, ordered it fresh out of Amazon and we'll, uh, we'll get that installed and see if this thing cranks over. So I got the old starter solenoid removed and as you can see, these are the ends that go on to the, the starter solenoid itself right here. So uh, what you're gonna wanna do is clean these up really well. As you can see, they're very, very rusted and corroded. Uh, and that's not gonna allow for a good, good connection uh, to our new one. So we'll go ahead and we'll clean them up real well with a wire brush. Real nice, you can see they're all cleaned up good. So we're gonna go ahead and get our new starter son this is the new one installed it actually hangs on a bracket right here and then we're gonna go ahead and try to tie all this wiring up nice and find good spots for it again and uh, yeah I'll get back with you all right guys so I've come to the conclusion that before we can tie up this wiring much more than I already have here we need the plastics back on so we can see 
kind of where we can route things at our best to kind of to hide as many wires as we can and clean things up really nice. So the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is reinstall the plastics, except we're gonna install the new ones here. So um, from what we're gonna end up doing is I'm gonna set you down and I'm just gonna work on it. They're just gonna go back on in the same way that them there came off. So we'll get after it here. So here's where we're at. We've got the, the plastics are all, all reinstalled. This is all done. Um, I got the new starter solenoid installed. Um, unfortunately, this is kind of the best job we could do with the wiring without completely um, basically replacing everything is new and looming everything and the customer just doesn't quite want to spend that time on it here. Um, so right now I do have it hooked up to a jumper battery. Um, we do have a new battery coming for it, but we just haven't got that in quite yet. But uh, yeah, so we're ready to, to test fire it in here and see how it runs, get that carburetor adjusted. All right, see what happens here. Turn that on, turn the key on, hit our button. Sounding pretty good, we'll get this jumper battery taken off. just uh, kind of clearing all it and everything's taking a seat again. So we are going to change oil on this next so I'm going to let it run a little while here um, and but the oil change will be on the next video. I'm going to do a separate video on that but yeah. You guys, guys as you can see it's running pretty good. Idle sounds good. Let's see here. And a little bit of, yeah, it's actually sounding really good. A little smoke coming off the muffler there. Looks like maybe it's got a little oil drippage on there, but the motor actually sounds really, really strong. So, yeah. Right now, I don't see any reason to make any adjustments. We did need to adjust our idle. Oh, it's kind of hard to see now because it's in behind all these wires. But our idle adjustment is this screw right there. Keep my finger out so you can see it. Uh, the more you would thread that in, the higher the idle would become. And so, on a machine like this, what you want to do is kind of set the idle. Honestly, it's hard to tell. You kind of have to go by by ear. But one thing you can pay attention to is the wheels. So um, this just has a centrifugal clutch in it that engages the wheels, just in other words, based on RPM. Um, the, the wheels shouldn't spin, basically, when it's just idling. You might see them rotate a little bit every once in a while, and that's okay. That's that clutch is kind of, it, it's not engaged, but it, it's, it's kind of on that verge. You don't want it where the, um, the wheels are freewheeling a lot when it's up in the air because what that can create is when it's actually setting on the ground and someone's sitting on it, if the machine isn't rolling forward, uh, but that, that's kind of where that idle is set, that clutch can actually heat up so and cause the clutch to go out. So yeah, as you can see, she's running good. And that's really why I enjoy doing this, guys. We took something that uh, is in pretty poor shape. Honestly, the plastics were pretty busted up. Carburetor is super gummed up, wouldn't run. Uh, customer purchased it, had never heard it run, kind of bought it, um, not knowing anything about it. Wiring hanging out of it, I mean, just a complete mess. And we were able to take it and get it running. So this is something you guys can do if you can pick up these little machines like this, fix them up and even, even flip them. So, Obviously, this one's a customer's. I'm not doing that, but yeah, he'll be excited to get the call. It's ready to rock and roll, and he can give it to his little guy for Christmas. So, until next time, guys, please like, comment, and please subscribe and ring that notification bell. It really would help me out. 
um, trying to get this channel up off the ground, make these videos to help you guys out. So um, if you could please subscribe to it, that would be awesome. And until next time, have a good one.